Hola, damas y caballeros. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Señor Arroz here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the beginning of the academic school year. It certainly is in my classes. This is the first week. And ladies and gentlemen, in order to help students and teachers get into correct mindsets this week and for the rest of the year, I wanted to go over uh, four things that I think are really important. So this is mostly for students. Um, I think it's important to have the right attitude towards your teacher, the right outlook, the right mindset toward your teacher and what's up ahead. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I am going over four things, mostly for students, four things that your teacher is not. Okay, let's get into it. So students out there at any level, middle school, high school, and universal, I'm sorry, university level, number one, ladies and gentlemen, the number one thing to remember about your teacher or professor, he or she is not, not your enemy just because he or she assigns you homework. Whether it's homework one day a week, three days a week, five days a week, he or she assigns you homework and projects on three day weekends, on vacations, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas break, even Groundhog Day. Come on, what kind of teacher assigns homework on Groundhog Day? Yes, students of every level, guess what? They're out there. Perhaps you even currently know them. There are teachers, there are college professors who assign homework even on Groundhog Day. But guess what? That does not make him or her your enemy. I mean, wow, I got to put it bluntly. That would be a really, really immature mindset. So don't think like that. No, he or she is assigning you work and maybe even being very demanding about it because it's a challenge to you, because it's a tool to help you learn, to help you work things out, make mistakes, get your corrections, and ultimately learn. It's a good thing. If you see that person as your enemy or a bad thing, it's time to change the way you think. It's a good thing. Don't forget that. Number two, your teacher or professor is not a bad guy, is not a monster just because he or she is tough with his or her grading of your assignments, your tests, or just because this per person enforces some rules and brings the hammer down on you when you deserve it. If you're chronically tardy, you're not showing up to class, the work you submit down deep you know is not up to par, and this person needs to enforce some rules, needs to kind of put you in your place when you deserve it. That's the point, guys. If um, you're not exactly cooperating, not exactly being a, uh, a good or even proficient student, you should expect some consequences. And if those consequences come home, um, it's on you. Most likely it's on you. Your teacher, your professor is not out to get you, not out to destroy you or take you down in a personal way. Guys, I hate to be the one to tell you, but there will be some time, if it hasn't happened already, there will be some time in life when somebody is, yeah, they are going to truly be working against you. Okay, maybe when you start working, maybe when you're in a competitive environment, um, somebody might get jealous because you are smart, you're talented, you bring a lot to the table, and at some point, it's, it's just impossible to imagine a lifetime when somebody won't be jealous and somebody uh, won't be trying to sabotage you, uh, and let's just say limit your success. But guys, be honest. 
it is almost certainly the person working against you is almost certainly not your current teacher. Don't think that way. Don't take it personally. Number three, students out there. And I kind of feel like this piece of advice is just as much for for teachers as it is students. In fact, maybe even more so. Ladies and gentlemen, number three, your teacher, your professor is not a shoulder to cry on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will confess that this one is probably a little controversial. Um, I can already hear some teachers, maybe even some that I know, um, saying something like this, saying that, look, uh, Mr. Ross, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Senor Arroz, look, sometimes we as teachers, we are the only people these students can count on. Sometimes we are the only positive figure in their life. Sometimes they have nobody else to talk to. Look, I, I know where you're coming from, but the first thing I'm going to say is that, first of all, that's not entirely accurate. That's not entirely true. They do have other people they can talk to, like a school counselor, school psychologist. And yeah, yeah, I know they don't, they, chances are they don't know them well. They're not around them all the time like they are the teacher or the professor. But I just want to state that some problems are, I believe, beyond our limits as to our role as teachers and professors. Okay, I think we can care about these students a lot. We can care about them. We can care a lot, a lot about their problems, but with limits, but with lots of limits. I really believe that our, our role should be pretty much limited to the academics. Okay, helping them solve problems in our class with the material, with the academics. And I just think that the more, and here's the part where I'm talking a lot more to teachers and educators. Here's the part where if you are listening to and helping students with personal problems, I just kind of think that's a slippery slope. I just kind of think that's problematic and maybe even playing with fire. Because, you know, think about this. A student comes to you with some kind of heavy problem, some kind of problem going on um, at home. Well, first of all, if that problem is really heavy, I mean really heavy, like abuse or something like that, it's probably your job to uh, report that to Child Protective Service and, and something like that. Okay, that's where you need to like report those things. But on a smaller level, if some student is presenting to you some kind of personal problem, um, then you may be inclined to offer advice. Why are you offering advice? Because you care, you're a good guy, you're a good woman. Okay, but next thing you know, that student could be dealing with something at home and then they start mentioning you. They start throwing your name around. Next thing you know, you are involved in their family problems, whether you intended to or not. Next thing you know, your name is being mentioned. And uh, that could just put you in a sticky situation. Don't be surprised if at that point you hear from those parents, that family, who else, whoever else involved is involved because you are involved whether you know it or not. Or um, imagine this, a student comes to you with a problem and you offer strong, passionate advice because you're experienced and you really believe, hey, I know how to handle this. Okay, what if that student takes that advice home and tries it? tries, you know, implements your advice because, hey, you're selling it as like the cure to their problems. What if they go home with your advice? They try it and it doesn't work. Next thing you know, a fail 
failure, so to speak, is being tied to you. And guys, it can just get messy. It can just get ugly. It can create problems for you that you definitely don't want. Um, my advice, here, here's what I do. I tell students at the beginning of the year that, look, Every life has some problems. Every life has some drama in it from time to time. But students of all ages, do your very best to leave those problems and any bad attitudes or moodiness, you know, whatever manifestation, do your best to leave that on the other side of the door. Do your best to leave that outside and not bring it into my class. And I think that's my roundabout way of saying, students, I care about you, but don't bring problems in here. And occasionally I, I get a student who uh, tells me that they're having problems with a boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, problems that seem pretty light enough. And I just like to make a real generic statement. I just like to say something like this. I like to go, well, I wish you the best of luck. Simple as that. Or I like to say, well, I hope everything works out. And then I quickly change the subject. I quickly get into class material or something like that. So I make a general positive statement and then I have my way of backing out of the situation. Um, I just think that's the way to go. That's my advice. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, number four, the number four thing that your teacher or, profesh, uh, or professor is not, your teacher or professor is not your friend. Okay, ouch. Yeah, that may seem a little harsh. That may seem a little controversial. Uh, a bit similar to the number three that I brought up. Um, don't take it the wrong way. It doesn't mean that you are incapable of being their friend, that you're not worthy. Um, I'm saying that they're not your friend because that's just not the relationship at this point. The relationship is professional. The relationship is teacher or professor, or, or professor uh, to student. That's the relationship. Um, friendship, it's not appropriate at that time. Now, here's the thing. After you graduate, after you're out of their college class, after you're off the books, so to speak, who knows? You might decide to uh, keep in touch, connect on social media, um, be friends after the fact but not while you're at the school, while you're in the class, while you're on the books. It's just inappropriate at that particular time. And for the teachers who are watching this, you gotta be careful. It could lead to problems you definitely don't want. Now for students, here's why you want to assume the mindset that the teacher is not your friend. Because if you think that he or she is your friend, it's easy to think that. You're, you could be buddy-buddy. You could have a lot of jokes that you share and all that stuff. But if you think that you're friends, then you could start assuming the wrong thing. You could start assuming that that teacher or that professor, prof gosh, I can't say professor today. <laughs> that teacher or that professor um, is going to give you a good grade no matter what because he or she is your friend. You're wrong. You may start to think that he or she is going to look the other way when you're tardy four days a week, when you ditch class. Um, you may start to think that you can turn in inferior work and things are, and you're still going to get an A. And the checklist is building up, and I'm going ahead, I'm uh, checking off wrong, 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 false, false. I'm going to treat uh, so-and-so better because they're my friend. Nope. False, 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 false. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, students, that's the fallacy of thinking that your teacher or your professor is your friend. You uh, may find yourself disappointed by assuming that. The best course of action, I think, don't assume that. 
Don't think that. Friendship, that's for later, after the fact, after you graduate, after you're off the books. For the time being, that person is your teacher, your professor, your mentor, um, a guide, a lot of positive things in your life, but not your friend. So, damas y caballeros, those are, have been my four things that your teacher or professor is not. Ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to leave comments down below. Do you agree with these four? Do you think I've left, left out anything big? Any, do you think this video needs a sequel? It's going to need an update at some point? Please speak your mind. Please let me know it's in the comments below. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit me a like. Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, uh, all of the above. Please hit all of the above. And also share with your friends, colleagues, uh, students, other teachers, and everyone else in between. So, ladies and gentlemen, until the next video, this is Senor Arroz. Gracias por escuchar. Gracias por mirar. Hey, dicho.